Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the 7 o'clock a.m. devotion for Eagle Brook Church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to the 7 o'clock a.m. morning devotion for Eagle Brook Church. My name is Don Grafham. I am the Executive Director of Campus Ministries. And today is May 29th, 2020. The reason I tell you this date is because we are sitting in a historic season in our country, in our city, and in our church. I also tell you this date because on Tuesday, I learned about the horrific death of George Floyd. A couple days ago, I learned that over 100,000 people have died to COVID-19. Last night, my son was dismissed early from Chick-fil-A in Northtown for fear of his safety. My wife was sent home from Target in Shoreview because of fear of looting in, in Shoreview. And when I went to bed, the rioters had burned down the third precinct in Minneapolis. Over the last three months, my wife and I keep saying, what world do we live in? When we put our masks on to go into Target, when we watch the news, we often say, what world do we live in? Well, we live in a broken world. My heart is broken today for our city and for our world. I can't think of another time in my life where things felt so fragile. Our world is broken, our city is in disarray, and like many of you, I feel sad. I'm, I'm broken hearted. I, I go through waves of anger, discouragement, fear, and, and even despair. A, a couple weeks ago, we set up a schedule for how we would go through the book of First Timothy as a church. The book would be broken down into different sections and assigned to different days. And in a minute, I'm going to read you today's assigned text, which appears to be the perfect text for today. I chose this day and this text a couple weeks ago because I had this great teaching that was supposed to line up with this chapter. It was going to be great. I had it all dialed in. I had props, visual aids. I was ready to go up until yesterday. Then... Due to the events of this week, I've, I've set my teaching aside so that I can address what is happening on May 29th, 2020. Yesterday, when I realized that we were sitting in the middle of a pandemic while our city was on fire, I actually tried to hand this devotional off to about five other people. We talked about other kinds of plans for this morning, but in the end, we decided to come back to the text of 1 Timothy, just to come back to God's word. So let me tell you what I'm not here to do this morning. I'm not here to bring an answer to an issue that has been at work for centuries. I'm not here to make a statement about our church of what they're standing for or against. You'll get to hear that later from our senior pastor if you didn't hear it last night. I'm not here to say what I condemn or what I'm what I condone, but I am here because I want you to know the heart of our Father. He's the only one that can bring healing and hope in a time like this. You might say, ah, yep, that's the pastoral thing to do. He's taking the easy way out. Just talk about God. Well, you're right. The only place I can think to walk right now is on God's Word. It is is our ultimate authority. In his word, we find truth, guidance, strength, and wisdom. In his word is where we find God's heart. God's heart is really what we should all be pursuing right now, isn't it? Only God can guide our broken world. While my heart aches for the family and friends of George, George Floyd, my, my heart breaks for the police officers that need to stand in the middle of a riot due to no decision of their own. 
While my heart is troubled by the events in our city, I believe that there is one true hope, and that's who I want to talk about today. So let's turn to God's Word and to be the one that was assigned for this day, weeks ago, 1 Timothy 2. And for those of you that don't do this, I'm a version person. I have the version app, and this is where I read my Bible on a regular basis. Yesterday, Steve Duty held up his Bible with 27, 25 years of notes in it. I don't have that. I'm I'm a digital guy. And so I have my, my Bible right here where I can look at it on any given day, wherever I am. And if you're not a version person, I would highly recommend it. And to be totally honest, I listen to God's Word more than I read it. I often listen to it while I work out. And so it's something you can do while you're in the car, while you're on a walk, while you're, uh, while you're on a treadmill. Listen to God's Word. Listen to it every day. So here's the text again that was assigned for this day. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Isn't that a great word? For kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. This is this has now been witnessed to act at the proper time. And for the purpose, for this purpose, I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying and a true and faithful teacher of the Gentiles. Therefore, I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. What a perfect word for today that God had laid out for us, well, for all time. Does that sound like a perfect text for May 29th or not? So let me break down four truths from this text that I think can help us to experience healing in today's world. And I'm just taking it straight from the text, to be honest. Number one is pray for our city and our country. Look again at at verse one. It says, petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people. If you haven't started doing it, pray for our country. Pray for our city. Let's be people who intercede. Intercessions, it talks about. What does that word intercessions mean? It says to stand on, it means to stand on behalf. So let's stand on behalf of our country and our city before God. Number two is we pray for leaders. Verse two is encouraging us to pray for those in authority that we may live in peaceful and quiet lives can't believe that verse is the day after rioting. So we must pray for our leaders. We must pray for our president. We must pray for our governor. We pray for the leaders of our country and our city to have a wisdom on how to handle this. To be totally honest, I get a pretty poor grade when it comes to praying for the president, the governor, and other officials. I need to get better at that. Maybe we all need to do better at that, praying for our leaders. Number three from the text is that God wants to save all people. Verse four says, God wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. God loves you and he wants to be in a relationship with you. The burning desire of God above all things is to see all people saved. And that's the burning desire of this church as well. We are compelled more than anything else to reach people for Christ If you are someone who is not in a relationship with God, today is a day that you need him as much as we all do, more than maybe any other time before. And you can do that by committing your life to him, by acknowledging that you have sinned, putting your faith in Christ and committing your life to him. God wants all people to be saved in this time of trouble. You can reach out a hand because God's hand is already there. You can begin a relationship with Jesus Christ. God wants to save all people. The fourth truth from this text is that we are heralds for God. What's a herald? Well, it's someone who announces the news. They proclaim the truth. Think of like 
the Daily Herald or Hark the Herald. It's the news of the day that is to be proclaimed. You are each part of the solution as a herald. Share the good news of Christ with others because it's only by God's power that we can have hope and truth. You are a herald. When I was 25, I wasn't married. I had a job where I could take the summer off and I decided to stay, get get this, I decided to stay in a monastery for three weeks out in the beautiful Puget Sound of Washington. I know, that, that's weird. Uh, but when I was there, I remember having a long conversation with a female leader, a woman named Mother Hildegard George. Oh, it's a perfect name. She was an older woman who had left her career as a school teacher so that she could live in this monastery. And I remember as we were riding along in her Subaru, I asked her why she would ever choose to live in this place. She said, I wanted to have a greater impact with my life. I said, wait, let me get this straight. You left a teaching role, living in the classroom with students every day so that you can have a greater impact? She said, yeah, if I commit my life to a life of prayer, I can have the greatest possible impact with my life. I've never forgotten the stock that Mother Hildegard George put into the power of prayer. I need to up my prayer commitment. If you're anything like me, sometimes with all this going on, I battle the discouragement because I want to do more. I, I want to be part of the solution, but I'm not sure I know how. Should I post something on my Facebook page? Maybe, but I'm not sure that that's going to have an impact. Should I, should I go down and protest? Uh, maybe, but I'm not sure that's the answer either. But can I pray? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not the only solution. But it's sure one thing that we can all do. And if we follow what Paul is teaching us, we should pray for our city and for our country. We should intercede. We should pray for our leaders so that all people will be saved. As we take on the role of heralds, people who declare God's goodness, his love, his truth, and a peace that passes understanding. And there's a truth that we can all use on May 29th, 2020. Let me pray as we close. God, we, we need you. <laughs> I mean, that is so obvious of what is going on in our world today. So God, I pray that you would fill every person up that is listening to this. And I pray that we would feel your power, that we would recognize your strength, that we would experience your peace that only you can give. God, we pray for our city. God, bring healing on our city. Bring your loving touch. God, I pray that you would care and lead and guide our city and our country. I pray that you would lead our president and our governor and the leaders who are trying to get their arms around this. God, would you bring a sense of unity? Would you bring wisdom? Would you bring a sense of guidance to them? Would you help them to lead effectively? Strengthen their leadership today and may they feel the power of God in them in this very day as they walk through this. God, I pray that every person would come to know you. If there is somebody listening to this that doesn't know you, would they, would they investigate it? Would they look into it? Would they try to understand an authentic relationship with you who love and have given your life so that each of us can have a relationship with you? I pray that every person would experience that. And God, I pray that you would continue to move in our church, our city, our country, and that you would allow us to become heralds. God, help us to be people who declare your word, who declare your goodness, who declare your strength, and help us to do it in a way that is effective, loving, kind, 
gentle, peaceful. God, we need you today. I pray on May 29th, 2020, that you would fill us up and that you would be the one that works in us and through us. As we get into this day, God, we give it to you and we ask for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks everyone so much for, for tuning in. I pray that you have a great day and that you will experience God's power as you walk through this day.